Hey, what's up? This is Alphabet Soup here. We love talking about underrated or lesser known brands over here, particularly ones which in my mind offer quite a lot relative to their price. So this week we're taking a look at Tillac. They are a Czech performance clothing brand who are definitely worth knowing about if you're into your urban performance clothing, an acronym in particular for reasons we'll get into later, as well as your outdoor performance gear and brands like Arcteryx. And while these guys have seen success in Japan, over here in Europe and in the US, they're not really too well known about, particularly that Tillak Putnik sub brand, which we'll be talking about in more detail because Tillak very kindly sent me two pieces from their recent collection to check out the Core GTX jacket and the Monk pants as well. And if that wasn't enough, we'll also be taking a look at their No Shack jacket from their MIG line, which is designed for military use, which is quite interesting as well. So let's take a look at some of this stuff. Before we look in depth at some of these things, we really need to understand exactly what Putnik actually is. Putnik, check for Pilgrim, is Tillac's urban utility sub brand. So whereas with their mainline stuff, you've got some nice colourful shells like the Odin, over here on the Putnik side, we're looking at a much more mature and decent saturated color palette with a small but cohesive collection of products which are designed for urban utility kind of wear. If Tillac is like Arcteryx, then Putnik is the Valence equivalent. Acronym consulted on the creation of this line as well, in case you were doubting those technical credentials, and they do still have involvement with some of those new products, and we'll find out some more about that later. And with the recent Evolution jacket, the collaboration between Tillac and Acronym, and the fact that over the years many Acronym products have been made in Tillac factories, there is clearly a very strong link between the two brands. However, Czech design studio Boa currently have the greatest input into this line, and you can definitely see the resemblance and the relationship there too. Now, let's take a proper look at some of these individual pieces, starting with the Core GTX jacket. The Core is a brand new model for this season. It retails at around 450 euros, making it the most expensive thing in the Tillac Putnik line. I opted for the grey version to give a little bit more contrast with black, but of course, if you prefer the murdered out look, you can, of course, go for a black version instead. The first thing that struck me about this is just how easy to wear it is, and I mean that in pretty much every sense. Aesthetically, it's kind of got that balance between the classic and futuristic. Up here on the chest, you've got those big classic style chest pockets that you'd find in a military garment like an M65 jacket, for example. And there are no kind of wacky features or zips all over the place, anything that might out you as a tempting cyberpunk cosplay. However, a lot of those elements are updated in subtle ways to make them feel ultra modern. Take a look back at these chest pockets, for example. They've been squared off and they've got this floating design as well, combined with that clean, quick entry top versus a more standard button, popper, or a zip. Look down at the cuffs as well. They've got these angular cuts of material to secure the Velcro adjustment. Semi-concealed hand pockets as well, a waterproof zip underneath with an extra flap of material on top, so there's a lot of security there too. In general, lots of straight lines, but not in a way that makes things feel over the top. The result is something which I think is going to feel at home in a lot of different outfits, from your tech wearest of tech wear things, right down to, well, just daily wear if you need something to protect you from the rain that you can just chuck on. In that sense, I feel it's similar to the Beta LT that we looked at back in the Arcteryx video, with the Core GTX being a little bit busier visually thanks to those chest pockets, so might suit them more technically minded for that reason. Throughout, it's clear the feature set prioritizes speed and ease of use. I think those big drop-in pockets that we mentioned before are good evidence of that. The flap on top keeps the contents protected, but you do have to be careful after jamming your hand in there that that little flap doesn't end up the wrong way. If that's not good enough though, you need some extra protection. Tillac have thought of that. Underneath the left-hand floating pocket, there is a concealed zip, and again, ample room in that pocket for a phone or anything like that that you need to keep safe and secure. That means although there are no internal pockets, you've got a fair bit of room to keep your stuff. Let's take a look down at the cuffs as well. They've got this angled material flap which looks pretty clean and it helps prevent those issues of cuff-based adjustments not looking too clean or causing that kind of blousing effect because there is just that extra bit of material to help conceal that. You'll see as well that the actual cuff velcro strip, which is pretty long and allows for quite a good range of adjustment, kind of retracts back into the cuff as well. Again, keeps it nice and clean and keeps it very quick to use as well. 
well. The hood looks pretty good as well. It's got a decent volume and multi-point adjustability. So yes, this is actually going to work and provide good articulation so you can move your head around in heavy wind and rain. Pretty bad conditions, basically. You've also got some stowable capacity with this because you can just roll this up and then it links to some little bits of Velcro at the back of the neck, which you can kind of flip open and then tuck the hood inside. I thought that this might have been done for weight saving reasons. This kind of mechanism is lighter than a metal zip after all, but the finish it provides is surprisingly clean looking and it works just as quickly, if not quicker, than it does stuffing a hood like this into a teeny tiny zipped pocket at the back of the neck. A deceptively simple feature, something I've not seen on any of my other jackets, but it just works surprisingly well. And the low weight in general is another great aspect of this that contributes to that easy to wear feeling. It looks and feels highly protective without weighing you down, so it's an easy choice to just grab and chuck on when you need it. And being made of three layer Gore-Tex as well, you can absolutely rely on it from a material perspective for wind and rain resistance. For most people, this is gonna be over and above what they need for all kinds of outdoor adventures. So yes, it is going to cover your trip down to the shops to buy milk. I think attention has been paid to kinetics as well. It feels pretty easy to move around in, despite also looking quite armor-like. That's kind of a hard thing to quantify, but I feel like it just works. I feel very comfortable in this. Um, I did go for a size large. Um, I would normally go for a medium on jackets. My understanding is Putnik does come up a little bit on the slim side. And uh, yeah, I think a size up looks pretty decent on me. The sleeves are a little bit longer than I would normally go for. But yeah, overall, I think that's decent. But as always, definitely check the measurements of stuff like this compared to things that you already own. This is designed primarily for the Japanese market. So some things may come up a little bit differently to how you would expect them to. 450 euros, clearly that is a fair bit of money, but in my mind is not unreasonable. We're looking at 50 euros more than the Beta LT, and you've got similar material, of course, similar construction, you've got those taped seams, you've got waterproof zips, etc. but adding quite a few features as well, like that stowable hood, like the extra chest pockets, you've got the concealed pocket on the chest, you've got a double zip, you've got stealthier branding as well, which is definitely going to appeal to some people. And you have to take into account as well that this is the kind of premium Tillac line, this is the valence equivalent. Admittedly, you do lose the armpit ventilation zips from the Beta LT, and I'd say overall the Arcteryx jacket fits me a little bit better than this one does, but of course that's a body type thing, it's going to be different for everyone. So I feel like the Tillac Putin core GTX is really offering quite a lot here for the money. There's a similar theme with the Monk pants. The overall aesthetic is sleek, it's modern, and if anything, even more appropriate for multi-environment use. I could see something like this easily being smart enough for a smart casual or an office wear appropriate kind of outfit. Stretchy, breathable fabric, knee articulation, plenty comfortable to move around in, not to mention that water resistance as well. I'm not 100% sure if this is shoulder dry skin because they don't describe it as such. However, it does feel extremely similar. It's possible that it's just a different fabric weight to the other dry skin products that I already own. This does have a little bit of a lighter feeling about it and on the inverse of the fabric on the back it has a slightly different uh, woven look compared to some of those other dry skin products. But if you're familiar with dry skin, that overall hand feel, the drape, that feeling of stretchy comfort, then you'll have a very good idea of what these are like. These are a slim tapered fit that I find pretty flattering and I think overall they're going to suit a slimmer shoe. I've been enjoying wearing these with the ACG Moabs, they kind of fit the bill for me there and while I wouldn't say they're super appropriate for like a really technical looking shoe like an acronym Presto or something, I do think you've got a decent bit of flexibility with your footwear choice and how you choose to style something like this. You might think these are pretty plain looking pants and although they're not as immediately visually striking as your strappy dangly cargoy boys, they do still have some nice little features on here anyway. Have a look down the right hand out seam. You've got this little semi-concealed pocket here which is actually quite sizable, easily big enough for a phone or anything else that you want to keep safe. If you wanted evidence of Acronym's design input though, look no further than the back of these pants. The zip garage which extends over both back pockets is exactly the kind of thing that you would see on a pair 
pair of acronym pants. Of course it works equally well here, providing some light protection without getting in the way too much. It gives these a much more futuristic finish than a standard five pocket pair of pants, and in fact if you've got nothing in these pockets, it kind of makes them just blend away and you wouldn't really notice that they're there at all. The integrated belt helps with that futuristic edge, means you don't have to buy one as well. It's almost like the city version of the belt on the ACG shorts that we looked at a couple of weeks ago. Similar closure mechanism still works well here and there's a single belt loop to tuck away any excess material. Like with the jacket, you've got a subtle tonal Putnik logo on one pocket and that pretty much finishes the job here. It's an understated pair of pants for sure, but it's one with performance and features and functionality in all the right places whilst looking kind of futuristic, kind of clean and very cool overall. But one of the best things about this is the price. These come in at 150 euros. I feel like you can't ask for too much more. They look good, they're a flattering fit, they're very comfortable as well, lots to like about the material, performance and functionality wise. They've got a couple of nice little features and details, unless you really are desperate for something that is more visually out there. I think a lot of people are gonna at least find something to like about these. And um, yeah, personally, I can easily see myself wearing these on a fairly regular basis from, you know, in a more smart setting, um, you know, I can imagine these with like a cool Valence t-shirt or something looking very sleek or uh, even just chilling at home with, uh, with a t-shirt on. Good for, good for recording YouTube videos, confirmed. And finally, we have the No Shag. This one's a bit of a wild card because it's from their MIG line, which is their genuine military grade stuff. And if we're continuing the Arcteryx comparison, this is the Leaf equivalent, I suppose. But with so much of tech wear and menswear being derived from military garments, it's another great source that we can get some cool clothing from. There are multiple parts of the No Shack jacket which show how it is definitely designed for military use. The much roomier fit is one. This is a size medium and it comes up similar to the size L core jacket. Of course, that's to facilitate very thick base layers, body armor, having things strapped to you, all that kind of thing. You don't want your military gear being too tight and constraining your big boy military muscles. If you check the forearms too, the underside is reinforced with this super tough knit, which for most people is going to be nothing more than a visual curiosity. You can't feel it too much because these sleeves are a little bit on the relaxed fitting side, but it's going to come into its own when you're crawling around a war zone and you don't want your sleeve ripped open. And of course you can rep your company with the big oversized Velcro patches on each shoulder. Combining those things with the chest zip pockets, the stealthy triple black colouring, that nice tight collar as well. There's a lot of things that give this a clear visual reference to that military route. And uh, you can really take that to the next level in uh, very kind of overtly technical outfits. I like to wear this with something over the top. Um, that CP Company life jacket vest type thing I think is a great example of that. But you'll probably find that's the case with all kinds of different bags and accessories as well that just provide that even higher level of technical detail here. Another cool feature, they've moved the adjustment part of the typical shock cord hem to inside the pocket. I imagine that's done to keep that potential point of failure away from the bottom of the jacket where it's gonna be, you know, stressed a little bit more, let's put it that way. But it does make it really easy to adjust because you can just stick your hands in your pockets and then just yank those strips like a lawnmower and uh, then it's gonna tighten the bottom of that jacket right up for you. This might not have the raw performance of Gore-Tex and certainly feels weightier, but it's still decent enough to wear that soft shell does have a little bit of pleasing stretch to it and it's more appropriate to be worn with the lighter weight stuff underneath like just a t-shirt you wouldn't have to worry about body oils or whatever uh, delaminating this as you would have to um, a Gore-Tex jacket to some extent and I do think this looks decent worn undone with just a t-shirt underneath too. Like the core it does have a stowable hood although this feels a lot more like an emergency thing it is this kind of quite thin nylon material it is very very small as well it looks a little bit silly on me I expect this is designed to be worn underneath a helmet where it would keep your ears and the back of your neck nice and protected. But luckily, this jacket still looks pretty good with the hood stowed away, so I'd recommend doing that overall. This, of course, is just one example of MIG, but they've got a whole range, so it is something that's worth checking out. I've heard some good things about the Raptor jacket, which is the kind of MIG top-end thing made with Gore-Tex Pro, so very, very rugged. Um, even more appropriate for your trips to the shops. But yeah, it's still gonna look great 
great when worn by us mere civilians. Overall with Tillac, I think we're looking at decent prices, especially with those monk pants, and good attention to detail and craftsmanship garment quality as well. These feel like things that you can make good use of every day, rather than some special occasion thing that you have to babysit. But they still look pretty good with some light visual flair combined with some cool functionality led design. Honestly, I think the lack of marketing, the low online general presence, is probably one of the big reasons why they're not better known over here in the US and in Europe. And in my mind, there's no reason why they're not worth considering if this kind of thing is in your interest and is the kind of thing that you like style-wise. The Putnik line in particular separates itself fairly well from the relatively crowded outdoor performance market, all those brands and products which tend to have heavier branding and certainly focus a lot more on the hiking and outdoor nature stuff rather than the more urban utility side of things. So again, Tillac, a cool underrated brand, one that I think more people should be aware of. Hopefully this video has gone some way towards addressing that. Um, it would be great to hear from you if you've already got experience with this brand. I know uh, it's got a couple of diehard fans out there, so definitely stick your thoughts on them down there in the comments. And uh, yeah, also if you've never really heard of them before, but there's a particular piece here that stands out to you, whether that be the pants or one of the jackets, then again, definitely add that to the comments because that'll be super useful to know as well. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. It is super appreciated. And of course, I will see you next week with another video. Thanks to Spencer Swift. Glad you liked the shoe recommendations in last week's video. And shout out to Nils. Definitely some similarity with the Road Warriors and the Zoom 004. Maybe it's a bit of a trend. Nike are doing these weird experimental things and charging very high prices. I don't necessarily have an issue with that. I just hope that we continue seeing some really crazy things that no regular shoe would ever have in it. Um, some cool future tech stuff. I think that would be interesting to see. Definitely some more shoes coming up. I actually ordered the black Rick Owens Converse and accidentally sent me the white ones instead. So uh, these ones will be going back. Um, not a massive fan of these, but uh, yeah, that's those. I also ordered the red A611 30s as well. Maybe the Nasu 2 also. Um, at least one of those will end up being a review. So yeah, keep a lookout for those. And of course, we've got the Harachis. They'll probably be coming up next week as well. And there'll be some clothing-based things as well. We want to keep a nice balance going on here. So yeah, lots of things to look forward to. Uh, but until then, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please uh, think about subscribing. That would be awesome. And yeah, that's everything I've got to say. See you later.